By now it's official. We all have a brand new Post Malone album to enjoy. Think about what's changed for this guy in the last three years alone, and the short answer is everything. I mean, look where we are. We're at a bougie vineyard in Provence in the south of France. So we're gonna talk all things new album. Maybe we'll talk about rosé wine and everything that relates to Post Malone at this point in his life in a very rare interview right now on Apple Music. Well, listen, man. No one's complaining. This is a hell of a location. It's pretty good. This is pretty good. And, uh, and we would have come here anyway just because it's a beautiful part of the world. But why are we here to see you? Like, why are we here in the south of France and Provence hanging out with you here and just not anywhere else? Why this location? What are you doing? We are here. We're working on our rosé. Mm -hmm. So we're coming out with a, um, a wine. Congrats. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. we're here, we're here, you know, finalizing the blend. I have a little prototype, little bottle type deal here. Can we pour this, a little something? Yeah, f uh, f yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is Maison number nine? Yes, sir. Where'd the name come from? Um, well, I mean, I was watching something ghosty mm -hmm. a while ago, like some a spooky show, and they were talking about tarot cards. And then I heard them mention Nine of Swords. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I did a little research and they said it was for, um, Anxiety, mm -hmm. that's a tarot card of that's anxiety. Right. That's right. And I wanted to make something that, you know, after a long, anxious day, and you're just working your ass off and nothing seems to be going right, you can just sit at home and have relax a couple of glasses a and, and have a couple of glasses. Take the edge off. You're damn right. And you have like five or six more glasses, and then the anxiety goes five, through five, the roof. Five or six more bottles. And then the anxiety yeah, is like off the go. charts. <laughs> it's, a middle, it's a nice middle ground between the two. You have to, you know, everything in moderation. Don't you, aren't you doing something with Nine of Swords as a, as a, a name yeah. as well? That's, um, we're making a clothing brand right now. Yeah. I'm just trying to get into, you know, we did, we're doing hemp and weed and yep. with the I was gonna ask, wine. I was gonna ask about the can uh, cannabis space. I wore my fancy shark tank suit, so I'm trying to get my tentacles out there. And You're see investment ready. A lot of fingers and pies, is this that is, the thing? Yeah, this is ink. This is yeah. the ink era. <laughs> You've done the facial ink, ink, ink era. Boys. And now this is like the, the dot com, this is the ink era, this is post ink. <laughs> Um, and I also think about like two of the most well-known areas that you've expanded into, which are kind of in, in the sort of anti-space of what people are going toward. Mm. Like people are moving away from the traditional alcoholic brands and looking for new ways to develop mm. high-level liquor. Mm. And you're like, no, Bud Light is a classic yeah. and I'm gonna stick with it. Oh, people yeah. are like, I wanna like reverse engineer trainers and you're like, no, I like Crocs. And you should have seen whenever I said Dre, Crocs are the wave, Dre's face was like, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> And I said, no, you know what? These are cool. People yeah. are people are gonna like these. You know, these are cool shoes and got the breathability that you need. So I mean, essentially, at the end of the day, it's just yeah. it's just doing what you like to do, doing what you want to do. And, and you know, if somebody doesn't like it, I mean, you're not gonna change their mind. That's a good place to jump into that because I just feel feel like that's where you're at now. And I wonder when you realized that it didn't matter what other people thought. Yeah, man. I mean, I spent all my life. I'm 24. For what it's worth, all my life, and you know in school and worrying about what, you know, oh, I care what so-and-so thinks. I care about what's going on. It's like, be yourself, express yourself, live your life. And yeah. if people want to join in with you and you can make a, a family out of, out of, you know, whatever you're doing, music, clothes, uh, art, whatever, you know, it's like- That's gonna be the best part of it. Thing. Looking around here and seeing that people, I've met a lot of these people already, I know that they're, you're tight with them more and so they've got sure. your best interests at heart, but if you're gonna spend time away from home doing things, you may as well take home with you. Exactly, you're damn right. I mean, I've known these, I've known Dre for, for five years, six years, and I got my mom and my dad and we're all just around and it's good to keep the people close to you that you, you actually like. But when you first start out as an artist, there was a compromise that comes along with, sure. the, with the territory. And I, I, I got a sense that there w were certain elements of the business that you didn't love, sure. that you tried, and then you withdrew from some of those mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it is definitely fair to say. It's like, you know, coming into something completely new at such a rapid pace. And you were just a kid. The way that it happened and getting used to everything and becoming who you who you are and becoming like a grown up and actually thinking about in the way that is the right way to think about and 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 you know just figuring it out. I kind of figured why you stopped talking to a degree and why you you held back from sort of having sure. to explain yourself or discuss sure. your situation. But in your own words, at what point and why did you decide to step away from from this? So there was a time where we would go and do promo all the time at the beginning, you know, and we would just. Okay, we, we touch down, 
here's a radio show, here's a radio show, here's a radio show, here's a radio show, and all that. It's emotionally draining, you know? It's like people asking you the same things all the time, and I would always try to, you know, liven things up and, and tell it differently, but at, at some point, you might you, catch you yourself. Run, you run out of and, and you, you run and out And you catch shit. yourself out as well doing yeah. that stuff. Then you start saying things in jest, and then they get taken. Right, and you in know, and, and you know, it's like being a kid is is hard, and then coming into this world where you're you're everybody can see every move that you make is is you know mm. it's different. It's something. It's a new experience, and you know, I've learned so much, and I've grown so much, and I um, I'm just doing my best every day, golden rule, treat people the way they want to be treated and just drive and be the best person that I can be and mm -hmm. make sure that whenever I have a baby, mm -hmm. my baby's taken care of and all my friends and family are taken care of and mm -hmm. everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God, even just in the last 12 months, you think about it, I mean, Stoney was out of control and, sure. then, and then, you know, your last album just extended that whole experience and I suppose, what, how has it changed? How has the last 12 months changed? What are the biggest changes in your life? Honestly, the whole thing is such a blur because these last couple of years have felt like two weeks. You know, it's wild. It's it's. Um, but you know, I'm not trying to make anything massive. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to make hit records. I'm just trying to make something that I love, and I know that everything in music is is shifting into a place where there's like. You look at all the genre bending and everything now that's just like this element and this element and you know what, f it, I like this, so let's put that in too. Yeah. And everything comes together and it's just, it's just sh music. It is music, and it's you know, and and I know that that was the answer to the question when it got intense, was like, look, I'm just trying to be an artist and I'm trying sure, to make what sure, I love. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but I think that was what, you know, initially it was like, okay, trying to pigeonhole you or pinpoint right. you, it, it was confusing for a lot of people and I think that it got sensitive for some folks. And, and I think looking back on it now, um, with a couple of albums under your belt, you've established who you are. Well, I mean, it was confusing for me. Yeah. I was still trying to figure out what was going on. I was still trying to figure out who am I mm. and making things, you know, work in a way that I don't want to alienate fans of my music, but at the same time, I want to do something weird and yeah. funky at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And I think this record, the new record, um, I think is something super Ethic, and I think it's yeah. really cool, and I think I'm really catching a groove and just. I mean, what I heard was outrageous. I, I mean, Thank we should you, probably time stamp, this, time stamp this a little bit because um, I'm not quite sure when people are going to see this, but mm -hmm. we're still mm -hmm. a ways away from the album. Mm -hmm. It's only just been finished. I think it yeah. finished yeah. like maybe ten days ago. Yeah. Well, you look really well, and I think looking back on even some of those those interviews you're doing a couple of years ago, you look like a different person. You know, yeah. you didn't really look like you were taking care of yourself mm -mm. back then. Mm -mm. So, and I wonder kind of how you changed your lifestyle and how sure. you how you decided to change the way you lived your life. Man, I mean, I'm way more laid back than I used to be. At the beginning, I was always in a house or in a studio all the time, so I wanted to go out and just go nuts, and yeah. I didn't really didn't care. I was just like, you know what? I'm a kid, I'm gonna do kid stuff and run around and just get drunk in the middle of the street. But now I With just... With social media at, at, Yeah, at, exactly, hands, exactly, though. exactly. Growing up in that situation and not knowing what the f*** is going on. Yeah. As opposed to that, now I stay more in the house. I like being in my house and playing video games and and having a nice cold sudsy one with the boys. Are you gonna get in the video game space? I know you're a fan. I did like three Twitch streams and it was a blast. But then I moved and I don't know how to set up my computer again. Right. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Don't you want to get on there and play Fortnite and just crush crush kids without them knowing it's possible? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I can't do all the building. Sh yeah. I like to be able to like emote through my character's gear and like yeah. you know like sh like that. I like the way you talked about emoting through style, which you've kind of. Again, going back 2016, you were not in that space. Sorry, bro, you were just not in that space. You were sort of getting up, putting the clothes, whatever you had in your wardrobe on, and going on and trying to be a pop star. And it's like somewhere along the line, you kind of clicked into what it was going to sure, be. And sure. I feel like Post Malone then became this authentic experience, and sure. it didn't necessarily take away from Austin Post. Yeah, no, I mean, that's like, I've always been a kind of a wonky dresser, you know what I mean? Like, throughout school and I always thrift shopping. Were you the guy that stood out? Were you the guy that people either thought was the coolest kid on the block or the wackest kid on the block? Yeah, of that, yeah, that was definitely it. Yeah, right. that was definitely it. And um, none of my pants fit, so my pants were always too low and my underwear looked like a mushroom. 
coming out the back of my pants. And now we're doing like cool ass, I think taking it back because the way I was talking with Kathy, she makes, you know, all my suits and and in the like 40s and 50s, these dudes were in like rhinestone suits and like crazy colors and everything. And I was just like, you know, that's baller. Yeah. And so we're just trying to, every suit that we make, you gotta put a rhinestone on it or something and just do something weird. Which one of your family or your friends though is just like, everyone else is like, oh, impeccable, amazing. Mm. Oh, they're gonna love it. Instagram, take photos, photos. Mm. Which one of your friends and family is like, nah. Oh, shit. I know my, some, be, some things I wear my parents dad, freak out about. Right. I don't has, he, has, he, has he had moments, Dad, where he's like, where you're just like, bro, no. Too many to count. <laughs> and I remember, too, the first, I was working with my friend making music and sh a long time ago, and then I worked at Chicken Express in yeah. Dallas. And the first thing I bought was some $800 dollar Versace loafers from, right. with like, I worked with two, all the money. Yeah, with all the money. All I was the money. Like, you know, yeah. And then my dad was so mad. Why? Because he wanted him to save the, his first check? Because he wanted him for himself. <laughs> no, he wanted me to save my Save your first check. <laughs> save your first check. Yeah, for sure. How have you adapted to... This is a genuine question. Mm. How have you adapted to having money? Because, yeah. you know, you, you, you came into this quick and money's come fast. Yeah, sure. You know, every tour, every album, I like to get a goodie. You know, you know, say, good job, Austin. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you worked really hard and you busted your ass and... You know what? I fucking love you, Austin. Mm -hmm. So here's something that you want. Mm -hmm. well, like what? Like what have you got? Like what? Like what's a, what's a treat? A watch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice a watch. Richard like, Mill, nice yeah. car, whatever. You yeah, know. Yeah, sure. And then, but now I'm trying to take a second and look, and I'm saying, you know what? Let's put this money in a wine or mm -hmm. a, a or a weed or clothes and all this shit. So then that money just make it long. Multiplies. Make your money long. Uh, you invested in Utah. Yes, sir. It, it sounds like in a pretty big way. And um, I think most people, when they run into the kind of success that, that you did and, mm. you know, on, on album two, they stay in a place where it's, where it's cooking. Mm. They stay in LA or in New York mm. or London or something mm. like that. But you actually chose to go and leave all of that behind. Mm. What prompted the move? Well, I did a show in this dope venue right next to the Salt Lakes, the Salt Flats in Utah. And I said, you know what? It kind of stinks because the sulfur and all that. I don't know if it's sulfur, but it was something that made the air smell. Mm. Stinky, but I was like, this is so beautiful. This is so fucking awesome. And I, at that time, I was already sick of LA. I feel like in LA, this is an unfair statement to say, but I feel like a lot of people want to be somebody and they'll use every piece, last piece they can get out of you to better themselves and not think about anybody else. And I kind of just wanted to get away to where I can have my own oasis. We're building a studio up there right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever I got to go to L.A., I can go, like, we just flew out to L.A. for a week and finished the last bit of the record. You can handle it now. Yeah. Is that where you were when Paranoid got written? Because that song to me is like, you kicked off Beer Bongs and Beer. Okay, so Stoney has all this hunger to it. Sure. It's all like, it's all like Manifest Destiny. It's like congratulations sure. and all these kind of songs that, that feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going to achieve through my music, sure. so I'm going to write about it. Then Beer Bongs and Bentley was like, oh man, <laughs> a paranoid man yeah. makes paranoid plans. Sure. You know, I got sure. my gun on the side and if sure. you come anywhere near me, dude, I'm, off, sure. so I'm in survivalist mode. Sure. Yeah, I mean, was that it, when you were kind of in the thick of it all? I mean, I have, in, in LA I had, the, I think I wrote Paranoid in direct response to my old house being, I moved out, but my old house got broken into and there were new people living in there and they were just getting fucked with because they thought that I still lived there. Right. So I was like, man, this fucking sucks. And the life now is, it, it, it comes with a give and take. Cause I, you know, I'm so happy and I, I'm so blessed to be able to do what I do. At the same time as, you know, it's very draining. You never know what's gonna happen next. It's so, it's so, yeah. as stable as it feels sometimes, it's yeah. so random. You never know if yeah. like, like with the plane, like, flying off to do a show and the plane almost, like the landing gear burst. Can you just, I mean, like, look, I mean, there's enough time has passed and obviously that's a real life changing moment, but I mean, how legit on the line did you feel you were life and death? It sucks, Yeah, it was, it was pretty terrifying and um, the feeling that you have up there, I'm terrified of flying already. So now I need to, I just drink like two dream waters or something and a glass of champagne and try my best to Dream it. water? Check it out. Okay. And <laughs> a glass of champagne, try and go to bed as quick as I can, because flying just scares the shit out of me. 
out of me. If I was going down and I knew I was going down, I wish they just told me, but they just kept me flying up there for like four or five hours. Wow, so the anxiety levels yeah, were through was, the roof. Yeah, it was awful. Are you predisposed, do you think, to anxiety? I mean, I am. I, I, I've suffered throughout my whole life sure. and had to develop tools to deal with it. And sure. Is that something that you can recognize that's in, in you? The, you know, the, uh, that there's a wiring in you that, 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 that thinks different and moves in different situations yeah, differently? Yeah, I feel, I de for, since, like, I'd say since the beginning of middle school, I always felt like I was always uh, anxious and kind of sad all the time, and but th I kind of came out of it. But then there was a time I remember, and I was smoking weed one time, and I just felt like I was dying. Mm. And then ever since then, I've always felt like my heart's going always fast, and I'm just generally more super jittery and shake all the time now. And it's probably because I smoke too many damn cigarettes. I do feel disposition to anxiety and mm. and daily basis but you know being in utah and being away from the grind and mm -hmm. from you know everybody else and it's just me with um my video games and cold one that feels good to me so was it really important to you that you followed up beer bongs and bentley's as quickly as you have i don't really like i said earlier i don't really feel like I'm not trying to make the dopest shit or like, yo, this is a big hit. Dad, or try to get you, anything you in there. You were totally like trying that. to make the dopest shit though. You in my own brain. Your own head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, you know what, this is dope. Yeah. I want it to be super organic and, and I want it to be the way that I want it to be. And like I always say, not to separate my fans from me or alienate my fans, but at the same time still take that next step mm. and make something that I think is big and, and that I think other people will think is big. And protect you know, that process. Right, exactly. And and I, I'm not trying to make huge smashes. I just want to make songs that, you know, tell stories and, and, and are genuine to me that I think is really awesome. I think your so writing's amazing. Not, I mean, I think that so there are, much. you know, there, is, there are real examples of, of areas that you can, you can continue to grow and evolve as a writer mm. over the course of your life. You've shown so. that already. Um, how many <laughs> songs? 17? Yes. Yeah, you keep it long. I like that. You know, you, it, it, how many did you make? to choose 17. How many in total? 50? Yeah, a lot. 40, 30. Yeah. Head down the whole time, once you started album mode, it was like, just focusing on that? No. On and off? A lot of tours and shit, so like, we'll yeah. just go in and lock in in the studio with Lewis Bell, mm -hmm. and Frank Dukes, and and uh, Billy and Brian. And Keeping everybody. it small? Yeah, yeah. We, I think we got like five, five guys, one girl, Jay. Yeah. Jay Lauren, legend. And no mm. one new in the camp, working with you in production or writing? I wouldn't say new. Yeah. I wouldn't say new, I'd say we've always been, whether we know it or not, like very yeah. put together, like, yeah. you yeah. know, working on uh, from even Stoney, you yeah. know. Because I felt like, like Pharrell was that moment where it was like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna go try yeah. this out with yeah. a real goat. Which was awesome. And Pharrell's such a legend and a good, good guy. And a crucial cosign for you at that moment in time. Yeah. I, I mean, actually felt like between Pharrell and Kanye, they landed perfectly right beside sure. you and sort of said, you know, we really embrace what you're trying sure, to do. Sure, sure. And I, you know, I, I, I've looked up to them for forever. Mm. And that meant the world to me. And it means the world to me to be able to, you know, phone them up and say, hey, what's going on? How are you, bud? You mm. all right? You know, mm. it, it, it's, sur it's surreal. One of the cool things I love both of those artists is that they've embraced their age and their maturity in, a, in, mm. a, in, in diff very different ways, but in a very kind of like, um, uh, they, they, they're not afraid to, to share their thoughts. Uh, Pharrell right. in his own way, Kanye obviously in his own way. Right. And, and I wonder kind of if there's anything that either them have said to you, or perhaps both of them have said to you in different times that's really stuck to you? Pharrell, I mean, Pharrell, he was just like, man, just take a second before you, you know, doing these interviews, take a second and actually think about what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I mean, you're right. Thank you. It meant a lot to me that he would, you know, he cared enough to come and say something. Yeah. If he didn't give a f he would not have said anything and would have just said you like a lot of people mm. but you know I, I it means the world to me that uh, people would come up and say you know what we care about you dude so chill the f out and think about shit. you know what I mean what about yeah you still call him up I haven't talked to him in a long time but you got on fade though thank you sir oh, that, was, that was a big experience for me that was legendary he said come over and cut the track so we sat there we had like a nice foldable picnic table type deal with a laptop and a mic there and we were drinking fireball for some reason i remember he said that's the first time he ever had fireball and uh we just sat there and around and made it and you did it mm -hmm. that was it that yeah, was let's, a, get, let's get a glass of wine i'm trying you, yeah, i'm waiting for it. it to be cold but you just, know what here let me pour you a little glass you. okay so 17 songs on the album who came along for the ride i know a couple we have a lot of i want to go through everybody sure. 
Um, there's one that's still up in the air. Who's that? <laughs> but Ozzy's confirmed. Ozzy is confirmed. Ozzy f***ing Osborne, baby. That's crazy. That's pretty awesome. So what happened? I mean, did he come down to the studio? Um, I was in, I was in Utah, because I had just got off tour. It's good, right? It's good, man. So, Ozzy went over to Watt's house. He talked to Watt before. Oh, I love Watt. He's a maniac. He's I great. Love it. Yeah, he's brilliant. And um, said, hey, you know what? Ozzy Osbourne's coming down. We're going to cut it, and I'll FaceTime you, and you let me know what's going on. So we talked, and it was like a big f***ing deal. Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. Did you take screen grabs of Ozzy on FaceTime on your phone? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> He sounds so like it's classic Aussie as well. Yeah, on that on that track, I think he crushed it. I mean, he he was talking to Watt, and Watt was telling me he was like, "This, yo, this is the, this is my favorite shit I've done since you know Sabbath, and since I started my own you know own way." And I was like, "That's huge. That is huge. That's, I'm like honored. Thank you very much." Who else is on the record? Um, SZA. Wow. Well, I remember we did FOMO and we had a run where we were just going around and we were at the same hotel and we sat around and talked and just such an incredible person, such a sweet person and just a genuinely good, good person. And I was just like, you know what, we had a song and you'd be perfect on it if you'd do me the honor of singing on it. Do you get nervous? Such because, you know, like, you, first of all, you've got to meet somebody and you have to yeah. have a great relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. with them and then you're like, all right, cool, we've, there's a meeting of minds here. Sure. Now, do I f*** that up? Right. By asking right. If, and, for a business shot? Or do I keep it, do I, do I wait next album, next, you know? I don't want to think of it as, as business. Business is on the back end. I think music at the end of the day has nothing to do with f***ing business. M music yeah. has to do with people. If you're reaching out saying, hey, I have this song, and like, as a precursor to everything, I'm saying that you can't go out and try to go for, oh, this person's hot right now. I want a song with them, so I song blows up. Yeah. It's important that it makes, it's organic. It's not like like two artists, it's two artists with each other and say, let's make something. And then if somebody does something for my album, I'm in the studio the first chance I get. You're good at that. You and Travis traded, right? In terms yeah, yeah, yeah. of the festivals and sure, things like sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Business has nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's just, I think it just starts off with a relationship. She could still B say no though. No, that's true. And that's that's the part that's anxiety Yeah, because how do you process like, that disappointment? Like, right? damn, you're like, do they not like me? Do they not like the song? But no, it's worse. The they the like me, but they don't <laughs> like the song. <laughs> You've become the perennial you know I mean? nice guy. <laughs> yeah, what's Post but, like? He's a nice guy. It's like, oh, you hate his music I that got, much? That's I got rough. song zoned. You got song yeah. zoned. Um, Who else? I feel like there's a long list. I'm trying to think. The baby. Sick. Such a sweet guy. Nice dude. So f***ing talented. Yeah. And, and, and it's exciting. I think the song's really Awesome. And likes to record and create in the moment I hear too. I love it. I, lo I love shit like that. Like, He's like, we do this together now on the spot. Is that how it was for you as well? Because I was on tour. Right. So we sent him the track and we were like, hey, um, I know you could relate to this exactly. You know, like, yeah. I love it. He's got so much to say and he does it so swaggy it's so and reduced cool. as well. Yeah, the way he just, just, yeah, just gives just you like, the, all yeah. the drums and yeah. the thump and the, and yeah. the snare snap that's and all, everything's popping, need. but it's so reduced. That's all you need. Who else? Who are you missing? Come on, I can't leave anyone off because the album's not fit. I haven't even seen a checklisting yet, so I'm gonna look for well, the idiot. Meek Mill. Which Meek did you get? Super Saiyan Meek. <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't full Super Saiyan. It was reserved, super, like turning into Super Saiyan. He had a, yeah. Same with the baby. He has a lot of shit to say about mm. what we talked about in the song, and I was just like, you know what? Like, the the shit that that happened with him, and it's like just staying strong and kicking ass through that, and yeah. not letting shit get you down and coming back and better than ever. He, I think he's he's such a smart dude, and honestly, like I say, such a genuine human. You, know? you future, what a genius! Like you're saying too, right there in the moment. Oh my god, just makes it in the moment. Yeah, it just goes in, it just works it out. Like it doesn't prepare anything, just catches the vibe. I don't know vibe. how that works, man. I sit there in the booth for an hour and do a scratch with all the melodies and sometimes, very rarely, the song idea will actually come out yeah. in the, accidentally in the melody, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Sway Lee. Sway Lee. Sway Lee's the same vibe. Sway yeah, Lee will sit there and the whole fucking song. Oh, but yeah, but you guys are, I mean, how do you follow that up? That was some magic. I mean, it's gonna I, follow up. You're looking at it like that. I so what is it? As a, as a, as a, just a song. It's just a song. What do you want me to do, Zane? <laughs> I'm doing my best here. You're doing great. <laughs> so what did you and Sway got? What, what's the vibe this time around? If it's just a song and it's a separate entity altogether. You know, when it comes down to the thi the whole the whole process itself, Sway is honestly just to be around and be around his energy. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorites out right now. 
he is so quick. He'll go in there and his, his voice instinct is for melody is yeah, out of it's control. In, it's insane. Yeah. Everybody will come up to me and be like, I love your melodies. Like, you have such an ear for melody. I'm like, not at all. His voice is just like velvet. He's Any other like, OGs on the record outside of Ozzy? I'm gonna guess now. Is Ye on the album? Uh, no, it'll just be me singing a song written by Ye. Oh, together. Uh, is it together? Yeah, you wrote the verses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we wrote it together. Yeah, he's not on the song. No. If Emil Haney is hanging around, then mm. you're one degree of separation away from someone else who I'd imagine one day would be a really great collaboration. Like whom's? Eminem. <laughs> I'm not <running> around. <laughs> we talked. Well, we haven't talked, but everybody's talked. And yeah. I mean, what a legend. Uh, if, this is a new drinking game. Take a shot of uh, Rosé every time I say legend. But not on this record, not yet. Not yet. There was a time where, you know, working everything up, but just timing wise. Yep. Sometimes they just don't match up at the right, at, at that time. Yeah. But there will be a time. That'd be know. great. I want to talk about congratulations though, just real quick, because obviously it's a song that changed your life. And one of the things I loved about it was the sentiment was everybody keeps coming up and saying congratulations, and yet sure. it took a long time for sure. that song to connect. I feel that with, with a lot of my records though. Like even with WOW, I felt it. There was, there was, there was a time to where it's like, it takes a minute for it to actually hit. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like mm. it's like you, you see lightning and then you hear thunder. But I feel a like stream. I feel like I feel like you know streaming fans just get it immediately. Right, 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 right. Right? Because they're looking for a new Post Malone song. <laughs> Great Post Malone songs. Come on, now. Wow's a banger. Is wow on the album. Thank you, sir. Yes, Wow's yeah, on the album. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. I sort of feel like you are a, a streaming artist in that regard because the way you use it and the way you continue to put music out and handle that environment and distribute it that way. I think it's just the best thing for music because it's just so much more easily accessible. I think just because the medium changes doesn't mean that the music changes. I mean, essentially, some people will work the algorithm and, you know, make make albums so... Put stats you know, before craft. Right, right, exactly. And... and you know, that's all good, you know. And are you a sensitive person? Very much. And does that sensitivity extend to the, to, the, to the wider space as well, beyond just your own family and friends? Do you feel an empathy that goes deeper sometimes than just the people around you? Yeah, man. I mean, this world is so f tough and dark, and life is f hard. You know what I mean? The sh that people go through on a daily basis is, d it's like, people just are so strong to be able to punch through and keep kicking, you know what I mean? It's like everyday life is always just beating down on you. And you know, although my songs are sad, some of them, it means a lot that it's somebody hundreds or, or thousands of miles away can sit and relate to the music and you know, just someone coming up to me and saying like, hey, um, I don't want a picture. I just want to shake your hand and say, you know, your song saved my life or something. You know, I watched it. I, I, I watched footage of you performing live and you start, You were starting your set with Too Young. Mm. And I watched 60,000 people <clears throat> singing that song back to you. Yeah. And that song is, that's a deep song. For, for your debut album, sure. that's a deep song and you cover a lot of ground on that song. And um, we've seen it just become too much of a reality lately. I mean, it's been Honestly. going on for a long time, but, right. but we've lost right. some real greats of late. Yeah. I mean, Mac. <clears throat> Mac. I feel like Mac was one of the first artists to really get you. Mac was the first artist to get me. Mac was the first one to tweet it, that tweeted me. And it's so weird. And it's so and just, cause I listened to him since the beginning. I was like, yo, he's awesome. This guy's coolish. And then to be able to meet him and become friends with him was just like, I look up to you. Like, you know what I mean? And now we're sitting here playing beer pong two weeks. Two weeks, yeah, we were gonna make an album. Did you get any of it done, or was it all no, in theory? No, no, no. Oh. We were sitting there playing beer pong, and we were like, let's, let's make a fucking album, and then we were coming up with names. And then, it's so weird, too, and because it was like a day, two days after he died, we were at an Airbnb in LA, and all of a sudden, the TV turns on, and it wouldn't stop. We tried disconnecting it and all this shit, and then we turned it off, and then it came back on, and I was just like, this is weird, and it gives me chills. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. What an incredible, honestly, what a genuine human human being. Yeah. Have there ever been concerns? Have there ever been reasons that you guys would be worried that perhaps certainly around this 16, 17 moment in time? In fact, should we get a chair? Do you want to join us? I'd love to, if you're up for it. Sure. You're bringing him on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs>
He doesn't have anything. The likeness is there for real, though. To say. Like the likeness is he there have for anything sure. To say. For sure. He has a lot to say. We got it from him. <laughs> from him, right? Can I talk about the Ozzy song? Yeah, you can talk about the Ozzy song. I'm just kidding. No, this is, I don't know if you know the history, but a lot of Austin's songs get leaked. Yeah. And some of my favorite ones have been leaked, and he gets mad and won't release them. Oh, that's like a rule for you. Once it gets out and you can't control that's the right. distribution. It's not every one of them, but it's been a lot. several. Right. And so I got, a, I got a little taste of the Ozzy feature song yeah. with Austin on it. And when? You sent it to me. Okay, okay. But I was like, that's so that leak? I texted Ray and said, listen, this Ozzy song is awesome, but, and he's like, how'd you hear? I said, well, it's on the internet. It's oh, leaked you're already. such a troll. <laughs> yes. So anyways, I had to let him in on the joke after it because the songs, I, I'm a big metalhead from back in the day, so. Yeah. My kid with Ozzy and a song was really exciting. He must have been having a lot of moments like that. I mean, even getting to the point where he's going to do, you know, Posty Fest up again and, and, and... Where I used to work, by the way. Right. I want to get back to the question that, we were, that I, I was going to ask before when you were off camera, which was, were there ever moments when it was starting to happen, White Iverson leading into the recording of Stoney, but it felt, certainly from what I saw in the public eye, as it was getting a little un... You, you, you were trying everything. Sure. <laughs> you know, did you ever get concerned? There was, th th there's always been a period of time where you're gonna worry about your kid. When he left the house, it was probably 10 months before we could go see him, and he was literally sleeping on the floor in a walk-in closet, mm. trying to make music, doing whatever. I met some of the folks. I think that's when I met Dre. Mm. Honestly, when Austin left the house, the only way to keep track of him was social media. Well, that's why I asked, watching all that stuff kind of go on, because I saw stuff online when I was playing catch-up about two days ago going, yo, man, Post was living a different life back sure, then. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, he, he played the Viper Room early on out there with a group of guys he was working with, and I was like, well, my kid's playing the Viper Room. Mm. And then you go out and visit him, you see what's going on, and then and, and I made all the people I worked with listen to it, and they're probably sick of it. Mm. And then White Iverson came out, and you're like, this was something special. Mm. And like he said, it, it got tweeted out by Mac and, and it just went crazy. And, and it, you couldn't keep up with it. it. It turned into not being able to worry about it anymore, but just trying to keep up. Well, I was gonna say, how do you, how do you sort of retain your role as a parent at that moment when this is, this is something new that's happening, not just to you, but to artists around the world, this level of speed at which things connected. And you've got, you obviously you love and want to protect your boy to a degree as much as you can, even if he's grown up. So, you know, what were your instincts telling you at that moment? <laughs> My instincts were trying to be a parent in, in the print age or, or, the, or, or yeah. the age where, where there were gatekeepers Tw yeah, to where yeah. you could see. Long gone. Twitter makes things much more accessible and much, it's funny how social media is so antisocial sometimes. Mm. And I've learned some quick lessons through some things that I've done as a parent for my son um, that I think any parent would do that probably weren't the best for my son at the time. But um, it's, it's a learning experience for everybody and he handles it way better than I ever would. I don't, mm. I don't know how he has the grace and charisma to take it because I'm, I've learned my, I've, I've, like I said, I've learned a couple lessons along the way. Dad likes to talk shit to yeah. haters. Yeah. Oh, you jumped on. <laughs> he, he, well, he, used to, he used to. Yeah. He used to go in. Yeah. There's a couple I won't miss. Well, and what, how do you feel when he goes in there? I mean, he's defending your honor, but at the same no, time, I you're told like... Him. I told him, I said, Dad, listen, my dad always used to say whenever, because him and my mom split when I was a kid, and he was always like, listen, son, you're not always going to make everybody happy. So I said, you know what, Dad? You're not always going to make everybody happy. If they don't like you, they're nice. not going to like you. Don't you love it when your kids it comes coach back you? to you real <laughs> yeah. quick. Um, we talked a little bit about, like, um, you know, watching success take hold and watching what can come from that. Sure. It, it, to a degree, there's a real sense of arrested development when you become successful as a, at a certain age. People want to keep you there because it's working. Sure. And now the way that, you know, drugs can take hold and the access to them, it can lead to tragedy. You just mentioned Peep, another terrible case. And I think mm. for you, there must have been a real desire also as a parent to ensure that he didn't fall into any of that. Right, yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Mm. The tragedies that happen currently um, man magnify themselves because of the availability of mm. information, but mm. throughout history, there's, there's been the, 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 the tragedies of success for young stars and um, that weren't necessarily, I don't, know, I don't want to use the word glamorized, but um, exposed the way they were. Yeah. And I think Austin mentioned earlier in this interview that, you know, the pressures can get overwhelming. And, and I think one of the things that we've all tried to do is, at least as parental influences in his life, is not tell him what to do, but try to be an example of maybe how to do whatever it is you decide to do. Okay. If you're going to do things, um, know the limits, be moderate with it. 
with, with the things that you do. That doesn't mean that you're not going to do things that aren't always right, but it always, it always means that you have a place to go back to where you're grounded. There's always a place to go back to with, you know, as, as, as parents, that's where we need to be for our children. And at the same time, like, I remember when Peep died and there were, there was a bunch of shaming, like, on social media, like, oh, these kids doing all their drugs. But, and at the same time, you don't know what someone is going through and you don't know how easy it is just to get caught up in something to the point where you can't stop. Mm. And it's not your fault. It's not, it's not, you don't need somebody to talk down to you or say, oh, you, you shouldn't do drugs. You need somebody to be there to give you the support that you need as a friend or a and family you, member. And do you feel that you're getting to a point now in your maturity where you can be that for others if needed? I, I've, I've been there. For your friends and your artists? Yeah, I've been there. I, I, there's, there's so, it's, it's f***ing hard. It's so, it's emotionally draining. And it's just like the constant anxiety of the whole thing is, is tough. And I, you've it, seen peers who you've been worried about. And yeah, and, but we sat down and talked and I'm happy to say that, you know, the people I've been able to reach out to and talk to about the whole thing are, are, he, are here. And, it, and it's depressing to see that the people who are not with us peep didn't have what he needed to, or felt like, felt like he didn't have what he needed to, mm. to go. But I don't, I don't even know the half of what anybody's going through. But I just want to say it's, it's fucking okay to reach out. Mm. It's okay to reach out to people because you're not by yourself. You're not alone. You have people around you who love you no matter who you are. And who's been there for you in that regard when you were in a situation where you felt misunderstood that the most during your career where there's nothing you could have said that was the right thing to right. say? And to your own admission, there were times when you were put on the spot and you didn't have the right thing I to didn't, say. I didn't. Th there's, you know? <laughs> there's been more than one time where I've, I've misspoke. And there's been more than one time where I felt like I've up and like what do I do where do I go you know my dad has always been there Jody has been there my mom has always been there Dre has always been there Smitty and what's he like when he's in that situation how do you have to get him into a place where it makes sense I think again? I think you just need to recognize where he's coming from because he is he's he's a very open emotional person yeah and dealing with dealing with the creativity that he's always had doesn't make life difficult it makes it better mm. but there are times you to enjoy the ups you need to see a few downs but you need to be there um, without judgment, without, a, without, without condemning or, or, or saying you're doing this or that wrong. And that's the way we've all tried to be around each other. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't matter who you are when you start. It matters who you're going to be when you think you're done. And everybody makes mistakes along the way. Everybody's going to trip. Everybody's going to fall. And all they said, like Austin mentioned, you just need somebody to reach, reach out to. What's the best bit of advice your dad ever gave you? I don't know. I'd say what it was. I'd say, I'd say you're never going to make anybody, everybody happy. That's always stuck with me. That's been a long time that that stuck with me. And what do you think is the most important piece of advice that you gave Austin? Don't buy other people pizza for lunch. Damn. <laughs> Yo. I remember back to the, he started school. He graduated in 2013 and he started college and he went for about four months and came to us in December just before the semester was probably end and said this this school thing's not for me mm -hmm. and um, I'm gonna move to LA and I, I just and I said you know there, there's a there's there's a thing that not everybody needs to go to college it, 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 not that the college isn't important for the people who it's good for and he said school isn't for me dad and I, I we got his grades later and I figured out why <laughs> but what 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 we what I said was that's that's fine, son. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you have an education or you have a passion or for whatever you want to do. Whatever it is, though, make sure you're the best at it that you can be. You mentioned earlier in the, in this in this conversation about how you'd never spoken before, but I happen to recall not like this, not like right, this. Right, but I happen to recall a podcast that you did earlier because mm. I listen mm. and Thanks. It, it's my pleasure. And you such were, a creep. You, <laughs> <laughs> but there was a, there was a time I, I can't remember exactly. It was, it was probably two-ish years ago, and it was at a time where people were out trying to step on Austin's neck about what he was doing, mm -hmm. who he is, the yeah. things he said, and 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 you you had the kindness and the empathy to actually be interested in 
in an answer rather, rather than painting a picture mm -hmm. that you had already drawn before you met them. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to thank you, dad to dad, about that because in, in this world where he mentions it's, it's hard, there's a lot of people in this world that it's, it's, it's easy to be unnecessarily cruel. It's easy to be unnecessarily critical. But what it's not easy to be is objective sometimes. So I wanted to thank you, Dad to Dad, for thank that you. moment. And it might not mean thank anything you, to you. No, it doesn't mean the world to me, especially. It, it meant you know. something to me at that time. Thank you, man. Thank Great you to so finally meet you. It's a pleasure. This Can was I the best part of my interview. Well, no, I we're good. You. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an ending. <laughs> Oh, there is so much more to see right here on the Beats One YouTube page, and there's a whole lot more coming as well. So if you don't want to miss anything, hit subscribe right now.